there we go some proper summer wallpaper now that it's July I mean why not it is July after all what's up everybody I want to talk about some quirks related to my little setup that I've got going on here I've been wanting to make a video about this kind of stuff for quite some time I want to talk about some of the various AV quirks related to my setup here in case anybody else wanted to try something like this and basically uh, explain some things, some issues that folks might deal with if they uh, try a, or uh, might encounter if they try making a setup like this. If this gets to be too long, then I'll just split the video up. But for now, let's just talk about some various AV quirks related to the setup I've got going here. Now, as far as that has AV Geek all, written all over it type stuff is concerned, there's two ways in which my setup kind of deviates from the norm and takes a walk on the geeky side. First, I use a television as a computer monitor. Secondly, secondly, I use an AV receiver for my sound processing. And my reasons for doing this type of stuff are, well, quite legitimate. So let's talk about the various reasons why I do what I do here. Now back in 2008, I used to have a regular 19-inch computer monitor and a 24-inch tube TV. The problem was I had all these consoles like the Wii and the PS2 that could do component video, and that really doesn't start looking noticeably better until it's on a flat panel TV. I also had situations where the tube took up the tube TV took up an awful lot of space, and I didn't really uh, it didn't really, you know, you couldn't really justify using all that space for something that I only used when I played consoles while I had an itty bitty computer screen, little 19 inch flat panel that's now over at the AV station for the system that I use the most. For 2008, because tell because stuff you'd hook up to a TV and stuff you'd hook up to a computer were getting closer and closer together, I figured make the switch right now instead of waiting till later that's what I was thinking back then anyways and so I went out and got a TV 37 inch Samsung TV at the end of 2008 and that's what I've been using ever since made a video about this back then and people were like hey man that monitor is huge I'm like that's because it's a TV <laughs> now Televisions and computer monitors have been moving closer and closer together over the past several years. I mean, nowadays you've got video cards and even built-in video on computers with HDMI outports that can go out to a television or an HDMI-enabled monitor. You know, the olden days of proprietary, uh, prop not proprietary, but computery stuff like D-Sub and DVI are pretty much gone. And computer monitor and television are almost completely interchangeable with one another. The only way you're not going to be able to use a TV as a decent computer monitor these days is if it's a crappy TV. I'd seen some off-brand televisions that look terrible when you, when you sent a signal through the D-sub port and tried to use it as a monitor. And uh, that's probably because they were just cheap off-brand 720p blue TVs and not something like a Samsung or a Vizio or an LG or something like that. So, there's a couple of quirks that I've run into since uh, there's a couple of quirks that I've run into since using a TV as a monitor. One of the first issues that I've run into with using a TV as a monitor is that a television has sometimes it has different modes that it supports, different screen sizes and different resolutions. So. There's, there have been examples where, for example, a game like World of Warcraft detected that I was outputting to a 24p capable TV and defaulted the game to 24p, which is 24 frames per second. So it's, it's basically a movie resolution. And I don't need video games to be at 24 frames per second because video games aren't movies and vice versa. You know, some movie buffs talk about how movies shouldn't look like video games. I say the opposite. I say video games shouldn't look like movies movies and I don't if I get a system that can output more than 24 frames per second then I want more than 24 frames per second so there have been some times when I went to select a uh, screen resolution and refresh rate in a game and I got some pretty weird choices because I'm outputting to a television another problem I've run into with using TVs as computer monitors is and television supporting less video modes and computer monitors is if you have an FMV or a splash screen with a weird resolution it'll cause your TV to black out. Test Drive Unlimited had some issues with the Atari logo back a while back but I think a patch might have fixed it uh, but let's try it here let's try starting up TDU the original TDU not TDU2 uh, TDU2 doesn't have this problem 
So I had to put the CD in because Sekiro, I was like, put the CD in the drive. I wish this game was available on Steam. I would love to have a Steam version of this game, but you can't really find TDU anymore because TDU 2 has totally superseded it. TDU 2 is just more. <laughs> but let's fire up the original test drive. Okay, there we go. Oh, no, no. 720. 720. Okay, there's the Atari logo. So that actually works. This used to be blacked out up until recently. I think it might have been a video card update or something, or a game update that fixed this. There's the Eden Games logo. Etc, etc. There's the game. And we're out of the game. It looks like this issue has been fixed, but uh... That's, that's not to say it couldn't still happen to somebody. And it really gets annoying when you have a game that blacks out the screen like that and it says mode not supported, and then you, it just sits there and never comes back. And then you have to alt-tab to find out that the firewall is asking for permission to let the game connect to the internet or something like that. So, stupid stuff like that. And uh, I realize that using TVs as computer displays was how things were done back in the 70s or something. But nowadays, with these fancy schmancy flat panels. <laughs> Things are just a little more complicated. So, uh, yeah. And of course you also have issues with, uh, here, one notable issue that I have with this television is that I'm using HDMI right now and it looks pretty decent. But with the default settings, it's basically a gigantic explosion of color because I guess this TV wasn't designed to have computer signal coming in through HDMI. It's just that old. And I often have to turn the sharpness nearly all the way down to get this screen to look like a decent computer monitor and not have and not look like an explosion of color. Uh, at, well, with what I do, maybe I should try doing that. Let me try turning the, the sharpness back up all the way, and you can see the difference. So let's take a look at this nice-looking wallpaper, a little tropical theme going here. Let's turn the sharpness back up to what it was by default, and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, see sharpness zero. Let's put it up to 50 and see how much of an explosion of color this picture is. Okay, remember how it looked the last time? Let's zoom way in. See, everything's all grainy and stuff. If you look at the windows, look at the windows, they don't look right. It looks like, uh, looks like the color's bleeding out of everything and everything's got little color halos. I opened up LibreOffice Writer to do like a Microsoft Office thing. I don't know if you'll be able to see this in the video, but everything looks terrible. Everything looks like it has color bleeding out at the edge of every pixel because HDM, this, the HDMI on this television wasn't really designed for uh, wasn't really designed for computer input. It's more for something like from a television or, a, or from a game console. So I have to turn the sharpness all the way down in order for this to actually look like a normal display over HDMI. Another problem you'll run into with using a TV as a monitor is overscan because by default the default settings on the computer on the uh, television might overscan your average computer display. Now this is that same Lieber Office window maximized to full screen with oh overscan and by default if you set your picture size to 16 by 9 like it says here, you're going to overscan, you're going to have to turn things down a bit. So we hit that, and fortunately this TV has a mode called Just Scan, and that fixes it. You can just move it around and we just cl you just move around the picture. Of course, obviously, you don't want to use any DNR or edge enhancement on a computer display, so you'll want, you'll want to shut all that off. And now, of course, now we got a much more normal display with the edges of the window in the actual corners of the screen in just scan mode. So that's another additional thing that uh, that's another additional thing that you run into when you're using a television as a computer monitor. I think that's about all the quirks related to the video side of things here. So let's talk about quirks related to using an AV receiver as as a sound processor for the computer. Actually, no. Unfortunately, because of the length of this section, we're going to have to save the audio stuff for the next video. So we'll get straight to work on that after finishing this one. But for now, let's just finish our talk about uh, using a television as a computer monitor with the final quirk, which is boot times. Yeah, this thing actually, not with the computer, the, but with the fact that televisions boot up similar to the way computers do. So it'll be slower to turn on when you uh, when you turn this thing on. And if there's a warm-up period where if the backlight's not at full bright, for a minute or so you know, for a minute or so after you turn it on that can be an issue too another thing I've noticed is that 
the HDMI, the sleep mode doesn't work properly over the HDMI on this television. So if the machine goes into standby mode, you'll just get searching for signal and it'll be like a screen saver on your display. It won't actually go into power save mode. So that's just an internal bug to the TV, but something to keep an eye out for because these TVs are all, you know, the manufacturers do their, do their thing with these TVs. And sometimes there's some notable differences that affect things like power consumption and how user friendly it is. I'll show you how how this TV is. Let's shut it off. And it's off. Alright, and now let's push the button. Oh, hear that? It just uninstalled in Windows because it's shut off and I'm using HDMI. Let's turn it back on. Yeah, see how long this is taking? Makes a little boot noise similar to a Mac when you first start it up. <laughs> and then your screen comes back. So it takes a little bit longer than most flat panel monitors, but then again, it is a big TV, so... Anyways, that's enough video quirks for now. Next time, we'll be talking about quirks related to using an AV receiver as your sound processor, and why I'm even bothering with something like that in the first place. Till next time, this is Multimedia J, signing off. Thanks for stopping by.